In this video, I'm going to be showing the setup and configuration of a TM3 bus coupler and configuring the communications between it and an M580. Uh, we'll be using Modbus as the communication protocol. To set up the configuration on the TM3, we first need to use the configuration software, TM3 bus coupler IO configurator. So this software is what's going to create the file needed by the bus coupler to identify the I.O. connected as well as, well as configure the I.O. itself. So we'll first start a new project. In my case, I'm going to be using Modbus as communications to a TM3 BCE IP. Once the bus coupler is added, we select it. And then we start adding the modules that are connected to it by clicking the Add button. And so I have a test set up here now that I'm going to input. So I have an analog in, input module. That is a TM3AI2H. I have a discrete input module or digital input module. That is a TM3DI32K. Click Add. I have an output module. That is a TM3DQ32TK. Select it and click Add. And the last module I have is a TM3DM24R. I'm going to click Add. So now that I have my modules added to the configurator, I'll want to go into the modules and set up any configuration for the individual module. In this case, I have an analog input module. I'm going to want to set it to a 4 to 20 on both of the channels. The other modules I'm going to leave at default settings. Now that I have the module set up, I'm going to go to the bus coupler again. I'm going to go to the memory mapping table tab. So this tab is what's actually going to tell us where the registers are located that have the data from these modules. So all my input data is going to be located at 4x3001. And it'll be a size of seven words. All my output data that I'll be writing to the bus coupler will be will be accessible at 4x3501 and it'll be a size of three words. So we're going to need this information when we set up the communications in the DTM browser on the M580. So we will refer back to this later. We're going to want to save this project so that we can download it to the bus coupler once we have a connection established. Now we're going to move to Control Expert. For my Control Expert, I have an M580 rack configured. The IP, I'll be using the onboard Ethernet, and I'll be communicating to the 10.1 network. To set up the communications to the bus coupler, we're going to to open the DTM browser by going to Tools, DTM Browser. We're going to add a Modbus device. We're going to name the DTM whatever name makes sense in your in the application. Click OK. We're going to double click the M580 to get to the settings for that message to the TM3. In my case, I'm going to set the TM3 up as a DHCP. So there's two different ways of setting the TM3. You can have a default IP assigned to it using the MAC address, or you can 
set the rotary dials, the tens and the ones, to a unique address. With that unique address, it will have a DHCP name that it can grab. With that name, it can look to the server that the M580 has and get its IP address assigned to it. The benefit of this is if someone replaces this bus coupler at a later time, they take it out of the box, set the rotaries to what this, the replacement, the old bus coupler was. When they install it and put it on the network, it will get its IP address from the M580. With those benefits, that's the route I'm going to go in this case. So for my bus coupler, I have it set to one in the tens rotary and one on the ones rotary. So the nomenclature for the DHCP name will be as follows. And for to get the, the address server to work for this device on the M580, I'm going to set enable to the DHCP for this device setting. Identify device name, identify by device name, and the identifier for the bus coupler is TM3BCEIP underscore 10 setting, one setting. So in my case, it's 0, 1 for the 10s and 1 for the 1s. Set the IP address that you want it to be configured to. The next step is to create the Modbus request for the read and write data to the bus coupler. So we'll add request, change the unit ID to one, and then the read address we will set to match the configuration. So pulling up the bus coupler, the memory word start is 3001 and size of words is seven. We'll do the same for the writes. So the write address was 3501 with a length of three and we can verify that once again. So now that this has been configured, we can apply the changes, close the dialog box and accept. And then now we can build the project, connect to the PLC, and download the project to the PLC. Now that the project has downloaded successfully, we can power up the bus coupler. During the power up process, the bus coupler will get its IP address from the M580's DHCP server. Once it's powered up and connected, we can go to a web browser and verify the IP address was taken properly by going to the IP address assigned to it. So looking at the DTM browser, here's my IP address for the bus coupler. I'm going to type it in and go to that address. The default username and password is administrator for, for both. After the first login, it requires that the password be changed. Before we go to download the configuration, I want to first stop communications from the processor to the bus coupler. Now, if this is your first time, this is not a step you will have to take. If you're changing the bus coupler configuration, you will need to take this step to stop the M580 from communicating to the bus coupler. So what we'll do is we'll create an animation table. We'll add the M580 DTM. Yes. We'll come down to the DIO control. And in this case, 
the address assigned to the TM3 bus coupler can be found by going back to the DTM and it's this right here in the brackets. In this case it's 514. So I'm going to go to the animation table, find 514, and when I turn this on, modify it, and set it to high, it's going to stop those communications configured. So now I can come back to the web server on the bus coupler and I can go to the configuration. I can go open and go to the project file we created. We can then verify that what we opened is the correct file and click apply. Now that it's downloaded successfully, we can come back to the M580 program, re-enable the communications, and to verify it is communicating, we can now add the DTM for the bus coupler. So find the name that you created, add it to the animation table, and the freshness should have a one, indicating that we are actively communicating. Any data from the bus coupler will be populated inside the DTM in the configured arrays. Thank you.